Guess, guess, guess who got brands talking? Brandlife.co.za Good afternoon and welcome to Love and Relationship. Um, today I'm here with uh, a guest, Nadia Pretorius. Um, Nadia, can you say hi to the people? Uh, good afternoon. And, okay, and uh, Nadia is here today with us. Today we have an exciting um, topic to discuss. We're looking at... Um, ways of showing love to one another we're looking at um, ways which couples can show love in marriage and before i go into what we have to discuss today um i would like to ask uh, nadia to tell us a bit about herself what she does i mean you we get to know her and then so we can know from the perspective she will be sharing with us please yeah. um first i would like to say thank you so much for the opportunity You're of being welcome. here today it's You're amazing welcome. Okay, so I'm a pastor and an evangelist. I um, am a founder of a foundation called the BI Foundation. Okay. I run a nursery school in the West Rand area called okay. the BI Nursery School. And I also facilitate parenting classes called Parent Effectiveness Training. Wow, that's great. So we have a lot of, uh, Nadia is a well of wisdom here. And I believe that we will learn a lot from what she has to offer today. Um, today, I want to start by, you know, saying that one of the things I've discovered in marriage is that some couples keep love in their heart without their partners knowing about the love they have. And, you know, um, sometimes you find out that, you know, when there is an issue and couples are fighting or there is a misunderstanding, you find the other couple said, you know, I have loved you so much and you did this to me. And the other one is like, when did you love me so much? I mean, <laughs> I haven't seen anything. I mean, yes, I mean, I've not experienced the love. So today we want to look at how couples can show love because I've said here before that love is an action word. It's not something that you say, I love, but the other person can experience it, can see anything. In fact, sometimes the other person is seeing the opposite of love. So couples need to learn how to show this love and not just show it once a month. I know some couples are only, um, they only get ready for Valentine's Day. And they say, you know, on the 14th. I mean, who survives love once in a year? I mean, <laughs> that that is something else. So we want to look at how couples can show love to one another daily. Because love is something that we need to experience every day. So um, I will be, you know, asking some few questions. But before then, I also want to... Um, let the people know there is a, a passage here in the Bible I saw that really has some points I want to pick out uh, in First Peter 3 8 to 9. It says, So all of you should live together in peace, try to understand each other, love each other like brothers and sisters, be kind and humble, don't do wrong to anyone to pay them back for doing wrong to you, or don't insult anyone to pay them back for insulting you, but ask God to bless them. So I see some points here that can, you know, couples can use to show love to one another. But before we go into this point, I want to ask you, um, how can a man show love to his wife? I mean, like you speaking, speak from the perspective of a woman. I mean, what are the things you could expect, you know, your husband to do to show love to you? Or you could advise men to do to show love to their wives? in practical terms because sometimes men are clueless they say i've done this she's still angry i've done this she's still angry I've done what must i do kill myself <laughs> so i think you can help some men here today i mean little big things whatever it is just some few men things that women would like to see as a show of love that you can help us here yeah sure well, um, in my personal life, um, marriage is, is something very close to my heart as I am married and it's okay. it's something that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. And it's been um, very important to me as my mom got divorced twice wow. with, okay. me, with me in the home. So mm -hmm. when I got married, it was something very serious and very, very close to my heart. So I, I really want to, wanted to make it work. Okay, wow. And I struggled to... to 
to grasp what marriage was all about because mm. it's definitely not what we see in the movies. Mm, right? It's not. It's not. <laughs> ah, the, no, the movies it's definitely are not. deceptive. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I started reading all these books about marriages and how, how to get the mm. magic going because mm. I really mm. want to, wanted a magical marriage, something mm. that was very special and different. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that all my attempts were falling on on deaf ears. Wow. Okay. Okay. So um, I did a lot of research and read a lot of books. And the one book I read was called The Five Love Languages. Okay. That's and a nice book too. Yes. Yeah. And mm. in that book, um, there's a lot of practical ways that you can show your spouse that you love mm-hmm. him or her. Mm-hmm. So um, when I started practicing what the book said, it still didn't really have any effect. Mm. Because the book says... Give and you will receive, mm, right? Okay. So if you speak, <laughs> if you speak your husband's love language, uh, then he will ru- f- um, mm, have so much love in mm, him because you're you. pouring mm, it. Mm, then you will give it. You'll to give you. it to you. <laughs> and, and that wasn't the case at all. Okay. So what I really noticed was um, the 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 most effective way to receive love in your marriage is mm. is to communicate your needs to your partner. Very but good. to communicate it mm. in an effective way. That's very because good. Because if mm-hmm. you say mm-hmm. you don't love me, mm-hmm. you're giving a you message. Okay. Which is which is blaming mm. blaming him and and mm-hmm. causing him to feel mm. Mm, feel, negative yeah, feelings guilty and guilty. all that it's like you've uh, already sentenced him yeah. yes mm-hmm. so so mm. I've noticed when when you put the word I in mm. front of a sentence you give okay. an I message and, okay. you, and you communicate in a way of saying I need this okay so you're not blaming or, or mm. accusing okay. anybody of anything okay you're just communicating your feelings and mm. your needs mm. and I found that a very effective way Wow! But if women could communicate effectively what their needs are, okay. then their husbands will will follow through. Will follow through. Wow! Okay, that's um very interesting. Um, you know, because in one of my books, I spoke about um effective communication, and um effective communication in a sense that I, in a sense that you know I, I try to you know help people understand that it's not what you say that matters. It's how you say it. Because, you know, when you don't know how to say something properly, you wouldn't get what you want. So, in other words, uh, I've said to people, just like we plan our thoughts, we plan things that we want, we really want to achieve, we should also learn to plan our words. You know, you want to get your husband or your wife to do something that is good. But maybe he or she doesn't see it that way at that time. You need to plan something. You need to, you know, make the person willing. You know, not force the person. Because where couples get angry, where where people get angry is when you try to force them to do something. So, like, what you're saying is that, you know, the ladies need to know how to communicate their needs. Because I see that um, a lot of times, you know, women want the men to figure out like the holy spirit figure out what is in their hearts pick it up and then just help them solve it you know uh, it reminds me of uh, a king who had a dream you know in the bible and in the the dream he forgot the dream so now he's calling his magicians and everyone to now tell him what his dream was and give him the interpretation of the dream what a thing and only god could do that Yes. But yes, God did it. I mean, he used one of his people and did that. But in this sense, I mean, the man is not, he may not be that closer to God to hear everything and do it. So women, please, you have to communicate. We have to share our thoughts together, you know. And um, also, we will be looking at this um, five ways of um, showing love. And we want to look at, the first one says, be kind. I- I'm trying to understand, how can people show kindness? In, in marriage? I mean, um, are there practical ways, you know, we can show kindness? I mean, how, how do you suggest that people can show kindness to their partners? Well, um, I believe when you get married that your spouse should mm. be the most important person in your life. That's, that's true. That's true. And when we treat our, spa- our spouses like the most important person in your life, yes. remember the most important person in your life Here's everything first. Mm. Here's your dreams. Mm. Here's your ambitions. Mm. Here's, here's your feelings, your thoughts. Mm. So when you 
treat your spouse as the most important in person in your life, mm -hmm. you will treat your spouse mm. with kindness. You mm. will do kind things towards your spouse because he or she is the most important person in your life. Mm. Mm. So you will, you will show understanding. Yes. Yes, and you will show care. You know, sometimes I think that one of the greatest um, challenges is to is to understand um, is to understand one of the greatest challenges is to understand um, how to sacrifice, you know, for for your spouse, because I I believe that kindness is also understanding how to sacrifice is to show compassion to show mercy you know and to treat your spouse as the most important person you know in your life like you said i i always say to people until you come to a point when where you see your spouse as the best person for you you will not be able to enjoy your marriage in fact you will not be able to even show kindness you won't be able to show that compassion and mercy so we need to come to that point, like what you're saying, to see the spouse as the most important person, the best person for you, the best person. I believe that, especially if you had prayed about this, if you if you know that you know this is a gift from God, you should believe it's the best. Except you did your own <laughs> manipulative ways to get the spouse, then maybe it's your own gift. But if it's something you prayed about, you ask God to help you, then. I believe is from God, and if it's from God, it's mu it must be the best. But the thing is that you see, the best does not always mean that the thing is a uh, is a ready made. You know, it's already packaged with everything. I think this is one of the reasons why a lot of people jump out of marriage because they expect that their spouses are ready made. You know, everything is fixed. So I'm just going into a man who is complete, who knows how not to be angry, who knows how to have self-control, who knows how to smile even when he's angry. No, 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 no. We are all humans here. So in other words, I believe that marriage is what you make out of it. I always say to people I've mentioned in my book, Living as One, I said marriage is like a virgin garden that God has given us to plant what we want to harvest from it to cultivate what we want. So in other words, the two people involved have to do something. We have to plant, we have to invest in it, we have to put in and then trust God that we will get what we want. So now I would like to go on a quick break before we come back to share, um, to continue with the discussion and then answer some few more questions. Please stay tuned. Dramatic talk with myself, Bongani Drama. Bringing you insightful conversations on the Convo Corner, your latest celebrity news on drama payment, and your latest fashion news on Fashion Fade. This is Bongani, Bongani, Bongani. And myself, Rose Rataka. Bringing you your latest news and sports updates. Every Wednesdays, 2 to 3 p.m. Only on www.brandlife.co.za. Harnessing the power of talk radio. Brandlive.co.za Good afternoon and welcome back to Love and Relationship. I'm still here in the studio with uh, Nadia Pretorius. It's been an exciting show and we're trying to talk about the practical ways of showing love to one another in marriage. Not just keeping love in your heart, not just um, feeling it alone, but your spouse should also feel it and experience it. And uh, before we came into the studio, we we're talking with uh, a, a brother, Frank, and then he mentioned something and that got me thinking that, you know, some spouses know that their partners love them, but they don't believe it. So it, it, it takes, you know, what we practice daily at home to make your partner believe that you truly love. And we're looking at um, some, you know, guidance here to how to show love. And um, we were reading, we read a scripture here in First Peter 3, 8 to 9. It shows some practical ways of how to show love. I want to look at the first two statements there. It says, so all of you should live together in peace. Try to understand each other. Those are very powerful statements. <laughs> peace and understanding of each other. I mean, 
sometimes I, I, I try to understand. I, I wish I could just know two or three things that could we could do to have peace in a relationship. I, I don't know. Um, I, I would like to ask uh, Nadia. Um, I mean, how do couples sustain peace in their relationship? Is it that one person should be a moron, just a stupid, quiet, and then the, the, the other one, because I, I heard a, someone said to me, he said, for there to be a happy marriage, one person has to be um, foolish, one person has to tolerate everything, and the other person has to have his way or her way in everything. So I, I don't know, do you think that is what we need to have a peaceful marriage? I mean, how can couples sustain peace in their marriage? Just if you have some suggestions there. Yes, definitely. Um, I think um, I, I, I still have to come back to effective, <laughs> <laughs> to effective communication. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so there's many challenges in a marriage, especially if you have children. Okay. There are a lot of um, things that happen in mm, home. Mm, if you mm. have small children, you sleep a little and mm. you can be overtired and mm. frustrated. Mm. So there's lots of aspects. If you have stress at work and... Mm. Uh, you know, you, you're, you're facing financial mm. difficulties. Mm. It's very difficult to deal with all these emotions yeah. and have peace at home. So if you, if you know how to effectively communicate with your partner, yes. you will communicate these frustrations mm. and these feelings with your partner and mm. say, this is how I feel. Mm. This is what I'm experiencing at the moment. And it's very, very difficult for me mm. to come home and then the, the, the food is not cooked. Mm, you know, mm. the, the dogs haven't been fed. Mm. The bath water is not run. Mm. My clothes are Thank not God ironed. Thank God for those who don't have dogs. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you see. So it's very, very important that you communicate your frustrations and your feelings with your partner mm, mm. so that they know what you're going through so that they can be kind mm. and, and prepare things for you at home That's to true. try and assist you to work through these feelings that you are feeling. Wow. And then there are so many solutions to problems there are there are many problems we all face problems every day but if you know that every problem has a solution yes yes and if you work with your partner and you find solutions for your problems um, create a win-win situation, something mm. that could work for the both of you. So, okay. so not someone being the boss and saying mm. this is how things are going to work. Mm. I'm the I'm the man mm. of the house, mm. you know. So mm. this is how I want things. <laughs> okay. So, um, if you can discuss things, like okay. I would like the children to be bathed at okay. seven o'clock. What you know? How, how do you feel about it? Even mm. involve the children. Ask okay. them. You know, how do they feel about bathing? So that okay. so that at seven o'clock at night we can all sit together in front of the television and and mm, switch and off for the day yeah, and, and have some some wow. quality time. So I, I really, really I have to emphasize that effective communication is, is key. Still very important. That yes. that is true. I, I believe that with communication a lot of things can be fixed. And I see another point here that says try to understand each other. You know, even even God knows that it will not be easy to understand each other. And it translates in that passage, try to understand each other. And sometimes I think, you know, if partners could, could put themselves in each other's shoes in situations, I think it will be easier to understand each other. Because now the wife is talking, 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 and it's like, uh, you know, what is she talking about? You know, so, there are some things that my wife really, really wants, and I wonder... What does she want this for? But I came to understand that I'm thinking like a man. What is important to me as a man is not important to her as a woman. So when we when we come to a point where we try to understand each other, we try to understand each other by putting ourselves in the other person's shoes and saying, okay, if this thing mean, means something to this person, then I have to try and do it. You don't wait till the person fights you for it. So it's very important if couples can try to understand each other. And men, you know, a man wrote a book. Is it, what, what was it? Is it like think like a woman or, you know, something like that. I've forgotten the, uh, by Steve Harvey, you know, where he's trying to say the men should, you know, feel and then the women should think, you know, where we can try to put ourselves there and reason together. So, um... I don't know if you have some points to talk about how couples can understand each other. Because sometimes we communicate. I think another thing is that some people don't listen. Mm. I think listening is mm. a very, very important aspect. Mm. Mm. So I think when 
we we hear mm. but we don't listen mm. and we don't feel our our partner's feelings mm. we 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 hear what they're saying but we're not listening and mm. i think what you're trying to say is we should have empathy yes. with each other put yes. yourself in your partner's shoes mm. for just that moment yes. and and try and hear the feeling yes, behind yes. what the person is yes, saying yes. try and hear what what feeling is driving mm. what the person is saying, is saying that's and true. then you will you will have some understanding and I, i think what's also very important is that we accept each other mm. Mm. that we stop trying to change each other that's true because mm. we have we have expectations of our spouses we sometimes want them to be mm. a certain way we expect them to mm. be a certain way and and it and they can't yes, they, they yes. can't be that so yes. if we can just accept them mm. we don't necessarily have to accept their behavior mm. but we can accept who they are mm. and we can accept what they're feeling about a specific mm. object and, and do you think that if if men had their way or women had their way they will change their spouse to just feel if 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 a woman had her way will she want to change her husband to feel like a woman to just be like a woman i mean in feeling and all that and do you think those if men had their way they would want to change their wives to think like a man because you see like what you're saying it shows that you know we have we are created by god differently yes and then our differences have their functions they yes. have the purpose if a woman were to think just reason like men just straight and all that without feelings i, I think it would not really work out well No. you know at the end uh, if the man too the other way but i always think that sometimes maybe the other person could want to force the other person to do things like he is doing or like he she thinks. is doing yes you know um i don't think that would be right no mm. i watched a video a while back um explaining how women and men are created differently mm. Mm. and and it showed that men actually have boxes they have a work box and they mm. have a they have a sport box and okay. they they actually have a nothing box okay. they can actually sit in front of the television and just stare ahead and if you say what are you <laughs> thinking about they say nothing uh. and they're literally <laughs> thinking about nothing which mm. is quite interesting mm. so um I really enjoyed that video. It okay. was really okay. impressive. And women have wires and they're all connected <laughs> together. And they go like view 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 and they 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 literally everything is connected. So even the everything. spot is connected with the other one everything, everything the is wires connected. are okay I see. So so it's it's <laughs> it is very complicated but uh, I'm not saying men should think like women uh, to understand them. Uh, they should just accept them. Yeah, that is true. They should just accept them. Accept yeah. Who and allow are, them to be and women. And allow them mm. to be women. Mm. Mm. Because we are very, very different. Mm. And very unique too. Yes. Wow, interesting. <laughs> so I, I just hope that, you know, uh, the people listening out there, that you allow your wife, if you're a man, to be a woman. You know, you know, celebrate with her. You know, women, you know, they like things that, you know, we men sometimes we wonder, you know, she wants the new clothes, she wants to look nice, she wants your comments. You know little things that matter in marriage. I've have having been married for this number of years. I don't take anything for granted. I I'm telling you, I don't see anything as being small to pay attention to or not. I have taken everything the same. My wife says, "Oh, you know, I, I can I talk to you now?" I say, "Okay, fine, let's talk." I said, "I'm so busy. Okay, please give me 5 minutes." She wants to speak about this uh, thing. Okay, um let's talk about the book. I mean, you know because you know you don't know what matters to the person. So listening helps you to know what is important to the person. Definitely. And to work with what is important because when you meet people's need because what is important is like the need not the want. Yes. When you meet people's need, then they are happy and they can also give back to you. So really we we are really talking about something very practical and exciting here. Um I don't know because of time I think we will have to wrap up things but before we do that I would just like to mention one other thing that we can also um apply in marriage according to that place which I read and I will suspend the other ones till the next show which um not the coming Monday the upper Monday we will continue this discussion um I want to talk about you know humility because i see that pride also is one of the things that could um 
you know, challenge relationship. Definitely. You know, where people don't admit their mistakes. You know, people always blaming, pointing finger. At that place we read says, be humble. Be humble, you know. So um, how do you relate with that? I mean, how can, what could make um, people proud that they cannot admit to their mistakes? They cannot work with their spouse properly? I think um, we all have a different set of values. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we all come from different backgrounds and come from different homes where things were dealt with in a different way. Okay, I see. I and, see. and I think some, I think all of us have a hole in our soul mm. somewhere. Mm, <laughs> Somehow mm, we were damaged, mm, right? Mm, mm. And I think pride is, a, pride is a way of making sure you don't get hurt. Mm, okay, protecting, protecting yourself. yourself. Okay, I yes. see. So I think um, if you are in a relationship where there's, where there's a lot of pride, mm. um, I always look at my marriage and think, of my husband mm. and I and I try and look at him through the eyes of God and mm. have grace mm. with him because I know I know where I came from mm. and I know what what how difficult I can mm. be. You can be, yeah. Uh, and I mm. always try and and humble myself and put myself in his shoes and accept him for who he is yes. and have grace yes. um in in our relationship. Yes. Because yes. um, pride, I think, is is a, a mm. huge problem mm. that it's, causes it's a big problem. that causes a lot of brokenness in it, relationships. It is. It is. I believe that some people have broken up not because there was a big issue that happened, but because the people involved, one or both of them, were so proud not to admit their mistakes or not yes. to say I'm sorry. A word like I'm sorry out of a sincere heart can change a lot of things. Definitely. So humility is a very important factor in having. An enjoyable marriage. And with humility, you can show love properly to your spouse. Definitely. So, listeners, we will be wrapping up here today. And uh, we will be back here same time next week, Monday, 1 p.m. Please tune in. I want to thank my guest today, Nadia Preterius. Thank you very much for coming through. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Definitely. So, don't disappear for, <laughs> for so long. I won't. So, thank please, you. for more info, you can go to www.brandlive.co.za. You can view the the youtube you can view listen to the podcast you can also get into www.livingasoneevents.com and you can drop us your email at uh, akandon at dot at akandon at yahoo.com sorry <laughs> akandon at yahoo.com please we look forward to hearing from you let us know how this has blessed you and how it has impacted your life see you again next week thank you